Dad's still in the game. He introduced me to it, which is either good or bad. But he started back... Well, the easiest way to say that he started, him and his mate, they bought an old school bus. They ripped all the out the interior, bought all the stuff you need to make surfboards and made a surfboard factory on wheels and travelled down the coast. Yeah. Till he eventually came down here right at the time where... Uh, Rip Curl and Quicksilver first started. So he happened to get here doing the right thing at the right time. Not a great deal has changed from the big original surfboards you've, you see everywhere around me here. I can do specifics for people. So if you've got a problem where you can't turn your board in this part of the wave or in another, or if you've got a bad knee, or I can shape a board to compensate for those problems and I understand what a surfboard does and I know how to change it to make it do what you want, mm. where a computer can't do that. I never have what I call a silent surf. I'm always talking to myself, analysing the board. So surfing all this old stuff, it's actually taught me a lot about things for, uh, for current day boards. Mm. But um, yeah, they're pretty slow and heavy. And if anybody's in the road, mm. uh, they're in trouble. There's a lot of different technologies. People are starting to use epoxy and um, molded surfboards. And I think a lot of development can and should be done on um, environmentally friendly surfboards. We still have not found a way, which is very strange considering 99% of surfers are, are very into preserving the environment and we still haven't found a way to make them environmentally friendly 100%. One thing that I know uh, is the only thing you need to go surfing is a surfboard. So I'm not going anywhere. <laughs>